Hey guys, Lightane here, and if you're up to date with my show, then you know that I have talked about video games and their mascots more than once. In fact, it's been a pretty recurring thing on this channel. So today I'd like to talk about one of those mascots that's been around for practically forever, but no one really talks about. So today, I'm going to be looking at Rayman for the PS1. Rayman is a game that was made by a company that was not very well known at that point. A company that had quite a few games, but nothing to really make them a common household name. You may have heard of them. Maybe. It's a company called Ubisoft. Yep, long before they were making Far Cry or Assassin's Creed, they got their first taste of fame when they made a game about a man without arms called Rayman. This is a game that was released in 1995 for the original PlayStation 1. In this game, you play as the guy in the title, Rayman, who is a very reluctant hero. He is just chilling and having a nap in the valley he lives in when an evil entity named Mr. Dark comes and kidnaps the Great Protoon. He defeats the fairy Batilla in the process and hopes to use the powers of the Great Bontoon in order to... TAKE OVER THE WORLD! This causes all the Electoons to scatter and try and hide, but they are soon caught and put into cages by Mr. Dark's henchmen. Everyone in the valley is running scared and there is no one left to help until Batilla sees Rayman and asks him to be the hero that she sees inside of him in order to save the world. Rayman agrees, albeit a little reluctantly, and sets out but soon realizes that he needs more power if he hopes to take on Mr. Dark and save the world. He can't even hold onto ledges, which, you know, honestly might come in handy. With Mr. Dark watching Watching Rayman's every move, can he overcome the henchmen, save the Electoons, and defeat Mr. Dark? Only if you play well. Rayman is the first game in this series, and it has had many sequels and spin offs. And I have to say, for the first game, it has so much personality, down to each level and Rayman himself. Everything in this game has so much originality to it. Rayman himself doesn't even have any limbs, like no arms, no legs, no neck, it's just like these weird fists and feet. But how it all works, I don't know, but it does. The lack of limbs allows Rayman to literally throw his fist across the entire screen and then by some weird magic of gravity or something, who knows how it works, it comes back to him. And this is your main source of attack throughout the whole game. You know, move over Sonic or Mario where jumping on top of heads was the way to do this. Nope, he punches things to death. The design of Rayman is very great and simple with very vibrant colours and the fact that he has such a big face, he has such an expressionate face as well, pulling many different, you know, facial expressions throughout the entire game. Due to his originality, colours used, personality, hell, even his facial expressions, it really helps him stand out from the other mascots that were flooding this era. I've read online that Ubisoft was having trouble coding in stretchable arms for Rayman until somebody suggested to them that, hey, why don't you just take out his arms altogether? And they liked this idea so much that they ran with it completely and they just decided to take the arms and legs and neck off just pretty much everything in the game. All of the characters in this game look interesting from the Electoons to Mr. Dark and it's mainly due to the cartoon art style that they used. This style looks great and because of the graphics it still holds up to this day because it isn't trying to be a 3D game. This game was originally meant to come out for the Super Nintendo but due to the fact that it was getting on in its age they decided to port it over to the PlayStation 1. That explains the cartoony style, the uh, gameplay being a 2D platform and also the scope of the game where it's not as big and huge as some of the other PlayStation games that are around at this time. So Ubisoft really wanted to give you a particular style with all the levels and the way they look. Each of the worlds has a distinct feel to them from the jungles at the start to band land where nearly everything is a musical instrument. They also put eyes on almost everything in this game which is a little creepy at times as even the drums are watching you but it also adds to the charm of this world. While there aren't too many levels being only 18 each one is broken up into three parts for you to go through and each one has a unique design and stage layout with many hidden secrets and things to collect. The main goal for this game is to bust open the cages and save each Electoon that you can. There are six in every level for you to find and by god are they devilishly hidden. Some of them require you to replay a level with a future power up in order to get them, some of them are just hidden like really really obscurely and others still are invisible until you go to a certain part of the screen and then they spawn in which you have to go back and find them. So that said it is very easy to miss stuff and you'll probably be playing through these levels multiple times in order to find everything. The other main collectible in this game are these tings. Yes, they're called Tigs. A uh, brilliant name, I know. And just like any other platform, uh, collect 100 and you get an extra life. 
There's also a magician in certain levels, and if you trade 10 tings to him, he takes you to a bonus stage. And in this bonus stage, you have to collect every ting before the time runs out. They aren't too hard, but you probably have to do them more than once to figure it all out so you can get the life. The other things that you can collect are Rayman's powers to make his punch stronger, to make his punch faster, and hell, even a maximum health upgrade. All of this is pretty standard for a platformer of this era, but with the hidden electoons, it adds a little more to the formula than usual. When I first played this as a kid, it sucked me right in. I loved the colorful graphics, the cute whimsical music, the way Rayman would slowly get stronger as you went on, and all of the secrets. It made me think about old school Donkey Kong, but with punching and cuter art style. Hell, you press a button and he even pulls a face to the camera, it's so adorable. The first levels were fun and easy, but then I hit level 3. This level has rising water and you have to race to the top or else you die. You have to plant seeds that turn into platforms and that's a great mechanic, but gosh is it hard! You need to be quick to outrun the water and you can't miss any jumps in fear of death. This took a while to finish as a kid, but I felt really good when I did. Continuing on, I went to Band Land and once again, the first level isn't too hard, but that soon changed and I became stuck. The game went from cute to brutal in the span of a few levels. No joke, this funny cute game where the enemies have a plumb on their head just went dark and tried to take me out. I could never get past this land as a kid because the jumps were too hard, the secrets too hard, and everything that would hit me would just hit me off the platform into my instant death on the ground. It was so frustrating and I thought this was a game for kids, but no! Far from it. It wasn't until later on in my life that I returned to this game and I finally completed it. I needed to be an adult and have all the platforming experience that I have right now just to get to the end. It is savage. Some of the jumps in this game are just complete leaps of faith and some of the electoons just boggle the mind like taking a jump out into the middle of nowhere then like a little cloud will spawn underneath you and you'll hear the sound effect saying that something hidden has come, then you have to jump back onto the land that you just jumped off of and boom, there's a, there's a cage laying in wait for you. There are no clues to this either, you just have to jump everywhere and hope for the best. By the time you hit the third world, the difficulty is at its absolute max and that is where it stays for the remainder of the game. Picture City is particularly bad with its pitfalls and its so many spikes and tiny little platforms, it is just so ridiculous. There is even a level that you're running and jumping through very quickly with pins falling down on top of you and if you make a single mistake, the pin will hit you on the head and because you're doing all these really tight jumps, you'll just fall off and everything is instant death. But if you finally manage to get through all of that, your reward is to fight the boss, Space Mama. So I haven't talked about the bosses yet for a very good reason. I wanted to lull you in with the art style and the cute graphics and everything like that to make you feel like I did when I was a kid. It's cute and it's fun, but before you know it, it slaps you in the face! And none of them do it better than Space Mama. Until this point, the bosses are simple enough, requiring you to learn their pattern and their weaknesses in order to exploit it to kill them. But you don't get to fight them until the end of their very own level. So you have to play through a full level, rescuing everyone before you get a chance to fight the boss. And like I said, you'll lose the first time due to you having to learn its patterns and how to defeat it. They are hard stages in an already hard game. The Space Mama level is unfair with its third part having you perform fast and accurate jumps to avoid being hit by a pin and falling to your instant death. If you manage to get through it all, Space Mama is there only to lay the smack down on you. Space Mama flies in on a washing machine of doom and attacks instantly at a pretty random way. She'll fire lasers and try and stomp you and summon these metal things in the sky as well. You will get hit and hurt and it is difficult to hit her as her head's hitbox is so small and flimsy, but if you manage to damage her enough, the fight changes and you don't get any clue to this. You now have to hit the washing machine to finish her off. There is no clear reason for this and chances are you will die, and die often. She is just ridiculously hard for no reason, and I almost rage quit the game at this point. I, I keep saying that this game is hard, and you may or may not believe me at this point, but I'm just gonna reiterate what I've just said. It is hard because in the whole game, you only get three hit points before you die. Now, if you find the health upgrade in the level, you do extend it to five hit points, which is fantastic, but as soon as you die, back down to three. It is so easy to make a simple mistake in this game and it just costs you your life and a lot of the times because the enemies are near pitfalls they knock you into those and you die instantly anyway. Some of the enemies aren't even fair like these assholes like they are below your punch so every time you do a normal attack it just flies over the top of them and you can't hit them. The only way to hit them is to either be on a lower plane than them so you can jump up and attack 
or punch far enough across the screen and then duck and hope that as the punch comes back it goes into a low enough arc to hit them. I really hate when a video game puts enemies that you can't hit. Like, I fully understand invincible enemies, but enemies that you just can't hit with your normal attack is just ridiculous. But if you manage to finish all the levels, you finally reach Mr. Dark. But you can't find him until you find every cage in the game. So this game forces you to be a completionist in order to finish it. But let's say you do, and you get to the final level and fight. I have to say, it's actually pretty fun and interesting. Using past enemies, Mr. Dark makes a new enemy before fighting you himself. It is a hard fight, but it feels more fair than that of Space Mother and if you win, it honestly feels earned. Rayman for the original PlayStation 1 is, in my opinion, not worth it. Uh, and it was easy to say this with all of the rage that I felt during this game. Sure, the art style is amazing and the world just looks incredible, but that just doesn't save it when the gameplay is just ridiculously hard. The levels are unfair with their pitfalls and enemies that you can't even hit, and the bosses are just even worse, especially Space Mama, who doesn't even give you a chance to learn her pattern before you die. As this is a game aimed towards children, it is not a child-friendly game at all. The box cover that I have even says that this game is for ages 3 and up. Honestly, if a 3 year old could beat this, I would just like give them so much money and praise like god damn you must be the most amazing person in existence because even as a, a 27 year old adult, I have a hard time doing this. It causes so much rage and I didn't even talk about the poor saving system of this game because it was already running too long. This game has been ported to many different consoles over the years and if you do want to play it, I recommend picking up the port uh, from the DSi, which is actually the PC port. And I recommend this one because it has a little bit of an achievement system in it and it has an easier difficulty. They move some of the cages from the most obscure locations to being a little bit more able to find and they increased your minimum health to 5 instead of 3 and if you get the health power up it goes to I think 7 or 8 which is so good because there's so many times you get hit in this game it just makes the game doable. But the game itself is a little bit more zoomed in than that of the PlayStation 1 version, so you will have a little bit of a harder time with some of the reactions, but honestly, it's probably the easiest way to play through the game. I do say it's easier, but goddamn, that game will still kick your butt. So anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys, and tell me what you guys thought about Rayman. I know he's a beloved character and he has launched many great games afterwards, but let me what you think about the original game in the comments below. And don't forget to cycle and subscribe even though I said it already! Bye! Everyone in the valley is running scared and there is no one left to help every- Fuck out. I should proofread these things before I do them. Not only should I proofread, I also go off script all the time. <laughs> Some of them require you to come back into a level with a future power up and other than- uh, Other than- Other than is not a word. Bet it, 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 bet